Hey, 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 welcome to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, where we teach you how to, uh, well, we equip you to learn and inspire, and I can't even talk this morning. I've had three, uh, three hours of sleep. Oh my gosh, I gotta start that again. So welcome to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and I teach you, and I hopefully inspire you and equip you to learn knitting and crochet, loom knitting, till your heart's desire. You were created to be creative, so let's Let's go today and I'm so excited you're here if you have uh, questions uh, and you're on the replay hit replay write the question and one of our team will try and get back with you and or skip it and leave it for the next uh, broadcast because on Mondays we have Q&A days this summer I've decided I'm going to um, back off of the um, two a week and I'm gonna go down to one a week to Q&A Mondays I think that's gonna work really well uh, we'll probably start pushing all this um, uh, onto, um, we'll uh, archive it onto YouTube, and um, the Q and A Mondays will end up going on uh, YouTube, which will be really great. Uh, so you'll be able to find them very easily. I know you can also find them on the Facebook page for the YouTuber people out there. They're going to really enjoy this. So I'm so glad you're here today. It's kind of a randomosity of upcoming things. I'm going to show you uh, even a little stitch and a preview for something coming next month uh, that is a pattern that's released. So I can go ahead. And show you a little taste um, also something that people have been asking for for a while from me so I'm really happy to be able to do that for you and uh, we'll get into that as soon as a few more people get on here um, I am uh, I'm excited I got my coffee today I haven't had like full-on coffee in forever and I've had like guess how this little let's play guess how many hours of sleep Kristen got <laughs> Three hours, three hours of sleep. <laughs> I was up working on videos for you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm trying to get ahead because the kids are done with school next week. <gasps> ah! And I'm trying to film all this stuff. So I now have um, two videos. I actually have filmed everything I need to film for June. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I got this done. And now I've got to edit. <laughs> So anyway, I'm coming back and say hello. Good morning, everyone, for joining us. Good morning, Bridget. And hey, Chris and Alicia, Patricia and uh, Heather, Crystal. Good morning, Susan. Hi, Jennifer. Hey, Edie. Is it Eddie or Edie? Edie, you're in Australia. Sweet. Good day. Wanda, and I say howdy from Texas. Wanda, hey, good morning. Um, hey, Teresa, so glad you're here, and Pearl in Canada, woohoo, so glad you're here. Hey, Joanne and Carol have jumped in now. Hey, Pearl, you just shared my video. Thank you so much, sweetie. Uh, hey, Ruth, oh, and she's in Ontario as well. I will be up in the Toronto area uh, this summer. Yay! Just for a few days. I won't be like making public appearances. Well, I will be, but I'll be an event, um, which is kind of a smaller thing. But I'll be up there. I've always wanted to go to Canada. I'm so excited. I hope my passport gets here in time. That would not be good. <laughs> yeah, I should have renewed years and years ago. The only trip I've ever taken besides walking across the border to Mexico is going to... Um, going to the UK, going to London and surrounding uh, cities and stuff for um, kind of a choir tour thing. So, hey, Joanne, let's see, well, it's chatting with me. Hey, Leanne, oh my goodness, I'm just going to bed just after midnight in Australia once again. Oh, stay up late with me, sweetie. Maybe we'll find something for you to enjoy. <laughs> ah. Hey, Christy, over in Washington, that's sweet. So we got people all over here. Hey, Tina. And Jackie and Sherry. Leanne says, oh, good for you. Busy, busy times for you. Make a smoother day holiday break with the children. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Um, yeah, my husband's actually taking off next week. And so we'll be able to go to all the little kid um, stuff, like graduation things and everything. So he never gets to do that. So I'm like, woo, thrilled. So I'm trying to get all the, like the big filming stuff so I don't have to like ignore him next week. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Here is a little preview. You want me to wear my thing? Let's wear my hat. Boop. Here is my preview. Let's see it. You're going to see me get it all prepped. Look at this. What do you think? Do you like my hat? 
So this hat is the polka dot knit hat. And look at this beautiful transition, this shaped top. This was made on needles. And um, I have, I filmed the tutorial, believe it or not. This is an easy pattern. The pattern calls for DPNs. I filmed it in circulars and in DPNs. So I actually kind of go back and forth and show you how to do it. Now, personally, I like to use a circular needle for um, all the way up to the shaping, and then the shaping works well on the DPNs, but they can be scary. So because the fact that they're written in the pattern is uh, for DPNs, um, in an easy pattern, I thought, I'm not sure people are going to really want to do that. So I did circulars. And also I figured out the math on it was actually better with five needles instead of the four that it calls for. So that's what I did. <laughs> so that's the polka dot knit hat. And this is from, uh, this is Peyton's Alpaca Blend. This is the yarn here. It's, I know it's flipped image. Um, so we'll have to um, see if we can get you a link to that yarn or to that um, that pattern page later on. I think Joanne will have um, the the right link. It's got got a little a thing inside, a little hot link in it, <laughs> so that we know it came from me, which is would be good. Um, let's see. I want to say hello. Um, yeah, Robin says, "Oh no, three hours of sleep." Although I shouldn't talk because I only got three hours too. <laughs> what? Um, okay. Hey, your poor Good morning. Um, April, uh, Alicia says, don't like live YouTube, too many chat and not many answer. Well, this will be the Q and a will be on fa uh, Facebook and then I will, this will be archived. So the video that you see now will be moved to a Monday on, um, actually we probably could put it on there today. Um, we'll, we'll archive it on YouTube. So it won't be live on YouTube, but it's a recording of the live. So it's just an archived version. So nobody will be able to see all the comments unless I, that's why I try and read your comments. So someone's like, that way it's not so one-sided. Like, what is she, why is she answering that way? <laughs> Cause, yeah. And also because I get backed up on uh, what's written. And so um, you don't know what I'm asking, uh, answering if I don't read it out loud or, or kind of give a summary. Um, Heather says, is that once a week or, uh, for summer or is that going to be all the time? Uh, for now, I'm going to say just the summer. Um, I, it will afford me more time. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie any time of the year, but, um, I don't mind doing the Wednesdays. I mean, I enjoy getting on here and chatting it up with you guys and telling you what's going on. So, um, the Q and A days will never go away. I'm not going to keep taking all the days away. It's just that during the summer, I think it's going to be easier on a Monday morning for me to be able to get on, jump in, do the Q and A and do it to the best of my ability, and then the rest of the week um, I will have to be with my family and everything. So, all right, I want to keep going because I don't want to disturb anybody from, they, they want to see all the goodies, right? So, here's that hat. That's the polka dot knit hat, and um, it's really, it's really a cute, it's a really a cute hat, and you could even adapt this. Um, I mean, honestly, this, this could be a little neck warmer, uh, but you could make the brim a little shorter. So, imagine like, a shorter brim yeah and then have this as the cowl and then finish it off back with the smaller needles because this is smaller needles here and then make um make a, a cowl at the I mean make a little brim at the edge there wouldn't that be fun that'd be a nice cowl yay just cast on some more stitches right <laughs> I'd have to find out the stitch repeat for this main main pattern I didn't bother figuring out the stitch repeat because I didn't really need to so oh everybody likes the hat Love the hat, love the hat, love it, love it, love it. Yay. Oh, Jackie says, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Jackie, I'm going to take you through it all, honey. And if you don't have the right circulars, like the right cord length, I'm, t I'm teaching them magic circle technique. So the magic circle technique on it is if your cord is too big, because let's just say, okay, so size 16 cords are really good for hats um, and for like an average adult hat and maybe like a nine inch or so is good for baby hats but maybe you don't have enough of those cords or maybe you don't have any and it didn't come with your set 
so you can work with a bigger cord and then I show you how to do the magic uh, circle technique which can also be used for socks so if you really don't like DPNs you don't ever have to use them honey it's okay <laughs> and uh, and having that longer cord affords you to be able to move around and, and use that needle uh, like that so Pearl says what size needles um, the needle size for the hat is going to be so if you want to go ahead and go get your needle supplies um, to be in pr preparation for that that hat will be at, towards the end of the month in June so you do have a little while to wait for that um, and then uh, it'll go up on the Your Inspirations YouTube first and then it'll be um, later in the month on in July and on my channel um, so you'll catch it on the blog. I'll talk about it on your inspirations blog. So that'll be also very good. So the size you want a set of four or five, I would say DPNs in the US eight, five millimeter and US 10, six millimeter double pointed needles or circulars. And so I have, a, I have these two. So this is the eight US eight and this is the US 10 and, um, yeah, I think it worked out really well. And these cords, I, I want to say these cords are like 40. Are they 40? They're pretty big. Um, yeah, they're pretty big. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Linda in Temple, Texas. Howdy. Uh, we love it too. What yarn for hat? Oh, yeah. Here, let me show you that. Did I get that? Okay. Peyton's of Al Alpaca Blend. It is truly a blend. It's not all alpaca. And if you have wool allergies, you're not going to have that with this because the lanolin uh, that usually causes the, the problem is not in here. And it's usually, um, alpaca is like uh, hypoallergenic, I think it is. Uh, but it's a blend of acrylic. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I lied. It does have a little bit of wool in it. So it's 60% acrylic, 22% wool, 10% nylon, and 8% alpaca. So it's called alpaca blend. But it's only 8% alpaca. However, it has alpaca in there. <laughs> it has a nice softness in hand to it, so it's nice. I like it, and it's a roving yarn. Uh, April, I need to look up what DPN is. Oh, I'm sorry, it's double pointed needle, and they'll come in like a package like this or this, and so they're all like lined up nicely. Um, I'm gonna give you a warning. I have this little. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was up so late, and y'all. I had I ordered my DPNs just for this project um, because uh, I wanted them all in the same. Uh, I wanted them to match my new uh, my new dreams uh, needles, and I didn't want to use my bamboo ones. So anyway, I ordered them. These are six inch of the eights, but I didn't realize that <laughs> these are five inch in the tens, and they need to be a six. So. Please, if you're ordering something or you're looking at your stash, make sure that you have at least five inches. So I probably, I explained it on the video. I'm probably a little hypersensitive about it right now, but in the video, I actually put little stoppers on it and showed working it while I had some stoppers on there because until I get to the decrease, um, yeah, there's like, there's way too many stitches on this little five inch needle. So I'm just being real with you. Get the six inch and not a five inch, but you do need both sizes. Okay. So I will also say if you want to try the DPNs, but you don't want to dive into the whole project, it's actually perfect to work the, um, work the circulars for the brim, work the circulars for the body and then work the DPNs for the um, the shaping of the crown. The reason why is because um, if I've, I've actually figured out the math and in, in, um, changing it from four needles to five, like the pattern says, um, moving it to the five needles actually makes it a more intuitive pattern. And so, like, don't you just love patterns when you can work on it and then you can put the pattern down, but now you know what to do and you don't have to keep referring to the pattern all the time, like got, not go crazy, like, oh, did I do the wrong thing? So at, as you steadily decrease, you'll know what to do. So anyway, but I, as all my patterns um, and all these video um, loom, along, or loom alongs and knit alongs, watch the video from beginning to end um, so that you can hear everything first rather than just diving straight into it. Okay, and then you can later on, you can fast forward to the parts that you need. I suggest watching the entire thing first. That's the best thing to do. So anyway, and then you won't, you won't be so crazy later. <laughs> or be like, that's too fast. 
All right, let's see. DPN, double point needles. Thank you, Pearl. Hi, Ashley Jackson. I see you jumped on. Oh, Jackie says, I do have the circular needles and have done the magic circle once so far. My second attempt kept turning around, had some issues. Yeah, and I kind of go through with some of those issues. Issues Also, in this video, I talk about how important it is to um, make sure not twist. I show how that sets up, um, how to connect uh, in the round uh, to not have a jog. Um, I connect in the round in a circle and in, or on the circulars and on the DPNs. And... Um, and also how important it is to, before you move on past your brim section, uh, correcting a mistake. Let's say you put a pearl in a knit row or vice versa. I show how to correct that mistake. And also I show how to unknit and go backwards just a few stitches and fix that as well. So I do a couple of things in here um, that I don't think I've ever shown correcting it up a column like that before. So I did that this time. So anyway, um, let's see. Love the color. Good. This is color yam. Yam. Yes. This is color yam. Uh, Robin says, do you think the polka dot hat as on the on your inspirations could be adaptable to the loom since it does, uses two different size needles? Uh, yes, Robin. Uh, I believe it can. Uh, want to say what you want to do is for the, um, for the ribbing section, um, I would... I was going to say make a flat knit uh, for the knit stitch, um, but if you're normally a tight knitter, I would actually just pull harder on the um, on the purl. So after you finish a purl, go ahead and kind of pull that really taut, and then that way it'll just draw it in. Um, I think it'll be fine that way. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. Uh, especially if you are a tight knitter, I think uh, that'll be just fine. And then uh, you don't have to worry about changing the size. The size is really just to get it to kind of draw in a little bit. Um, but yeah, just do not use an E-wrap. Do not use an E-wrap on the loom. Um, yeah, that's that's really my main thing. Because if you use an E-wrap, it's going to completely mess it up. And no, I don't have the conversion of what loom to use. So, and I'm not talking about that. It's just too much to tackle in one video. I don't even know how long the video is going to be. I just, I have it sitting there and it's ready for post-production, which means um, what I do after I've filmed. Um, Chris, you have nine inch DPNs. Will that work? Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah. Chris, you're, you're, you're good to go. You probably already know how to do this in your sleep, girl. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Robin agree. I love the pumpkin color. Uh, do you like the alpacas uh, roving or the brunette roving better? That is a good question. Let's compare the two. I happen to have one in view. All right, so the difference in this is the bulk and the content. So the content of the um, mm -hmm, brunette roving is, this is 80% acrylic. Um, so it has more acrylic in it and has 20% wool. So it's about the same wool content and it is, let me confirm. Okay, that's deemed as a number five bulky and this one actually is as well. Let's show you what difference is between two bulky rovings from the same company. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it in focus, but you can tell that they are two different things. So let me, let me wrap, I'm going to wrap around. Let's do a wraps per inch test, okay? So let me wrap around. All right, I'm gonna measure out the inches. Sorry, you can't see me. Um, trying to get the wraps per inch. So this one's wraps per inch is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then that's the um, alpaca blend. And the wraps per inch in the, um, so it's gonna be a difference of colors and bulk. And this one is about um, six wraps per inch. So let me just put just how many is on there. So do you see the difference? See if I can get I'm trying to get it in focus. Anyway, can you see the difference? 
So you can see that this one is more bulky. So the roving, the Bernat roving is bulkier than the alpaca blend because the point of the roving is actually that it really looks like a roving and it functions that way. But both of them can split. And so you need to make sure and grab all the fiber. So it's easier to grab all the fiber and the alpaca roving. And I did like it. And I really like the stitches on there. It's a finer stitch than the roving. So um, if you want to check that out. Um, and I love the fact that it's got alpaca in there. It's got a good hand and it also has some nylon. So it's got a little bit of a spring to it. So it's nice. Uh, Christy. Yeah, uh, Robin's saying you can, the shaping wouldn't be the same. You can work a flat knit for the brim and the true knit for the hat uh, to account for the difference. The only reason why I say don't, um, I may or may not say uh, flat is because it might be too tight. So if you are a tight loom knitter, then don't use a flat. Uh, just do like a tighter you. <laughs> uh, let's see. I always put stoppers on my DPNs. When you're using them, uh, Chris, well, I must live dangerously. <laughs> how do you like, how do you, how do you use your DPNs? Tipped or not tipped? <laughs> Point protector. Protected or not protected? Um, oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, flipping through it. Y'all uh, love your comments. <laughs> oh. Jackie says, good to have watching all the video first. So try to remind, remind friends to do that too. Yeah, you guys. Okay. So tip for all the makers out there, people watching videos for how to, um, by the way, read a really interesting article on Jen. Um, what is it? Zers now people who are born in the uh, 90s to um, early zeros. <laughs> those are um, those are our kids right now. You know, uh, those people um, are all highly consuming things, and they talk about. Um, they actually says they did a quiz, and they said, "Can you live or without YouTube?" And um, they they said they can't live without YouTube. That was like the one of the overwhelming responses. <laughs> Can you live without Snapchat was far less of them could live without that. <laughs> so, but they primarily use it, you know, for how to do something. And, and I totally get it. You know, everybody's really, really busy these days. So kids and other people are getting on to um, get help uh, from people teaching stuff. So because my channel is teaching, that is a good place to go to find out um, how to do um, anything on here. But I would suggest going ahead and watching the whole video also, learning the controls of YouTube the best. If you're on a desktop or a laptop, um, you can actually slow down the video and, and hear it really slow, or you can even speed it up. Like some people watch everything um, fast forwarded. So like you can even watch the first time you watch it. It's like a, one of my videos um, I'm gonna talk about here. Actually, let's just talk about this one. So this is a perfect example. So this Friday on yarnspirations.com, um, I'll be blogging on the uh, seat cushion, a knit seat cushion. Oh, I got all kinds of emails coming through. Hold on. <laughs> Notifications. Um, I've got a knit seat cushion coming up. It's a striped one from Yarn Inspirations, make using the Bernat Maker Home Deck Collection. It's like a cotton and nylon combination. So I am blogging on it, and then there's a video that comes up. And that video in it, I go through the entire thing from start to finish, which I have been doing. But in this particular video, I am talking about gauge. Now you might find that boring, but I talk about how to measure it and then how to change it. So like say this is a 16 inch seat cushion. I thought this is a perfect one because um, not everybody's gonna have the same chair, right? So you may, you know, have a 16 inch chair, 16 inch, 16 inch square chair, but your neighbor is gonna have an 18. Or maybe you have this random one that's smaller than the others and the other one's like bigger. Maybe you have a 20 by 20 or maybe you have an 18 by 20. Okay, so I talk about how to do that, how to figure your cast on when the pattern says one thing, but you need another. So if you're watching something like that for the first time, if you go to the YouTube controls, you can make it speed up and I think when you speed it up, unless you speed it like way up, I don't think my voice actually raises. So it'll be like, I'm talking like this and I'm talking like that. So I talk faster. You can understand it though. Not like the way I'm talking right now. Um, because I am going slower in the video. If you do the speed it up thing, it'll go by faster. And <laughs> you'll be able to kind of hear all the tips first, right? So that will, that does that help problem solve for some of you guys? 
So anyway, and I have to remember that too, but I can't do that. And mo a lot of people, like half the people are using tablets and um, phones to um, w work on videos as well. But if you can, you um, you can get on um, and uh, and do that on a laptop or desktop. And you could go to your local library and put in your earbuds and um, go off their Wi-Fi and uh, plug into their computer and watch it on there too. So if you don't have access to a computer, don't forget about your local library that has the ability for you. Uh, thank you for the link, Joanne. I appreciate that. Um, or whoever sent it. So Good Knit Kisses has a link for you. Jackie says, cool, my yarn lady laughed uh, when she saw my hat, the magic circle uh, I thought was knitting because it turned out I purled. Oh, <laughs> okay. Or you could be flipping it inside out too. Um, your knitting is going to kind of come towards you and out the bottom. And um, when you're working in the round um, on circular needles, it may look a little foreign, especially if you use DPNs too. Um, so... Oh my gosh. So if you were knitting and she's seeing the reverse, cause maybe you were pushing it, um, like the wrong side out and then you're working towards the inside. She may have been seeing that purling. Uh, that's just a quick guess. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Hmm. Andrea, good knitting and crochet weather here. Ooh, you need to get outdoors and do that. That sounds good. Alicia says I'd like to make a round scrubby or washcloth on the needle. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I've got a um I've got a little pattern for a scrubby, but it's on the loom. It could be adapted to the to the needle, probably. Yeah. Melody. Okay, I don't know what that comment is from Pearl. <laughs> uh -huh. Chris says yes. Uh, I still okay. So yeah, Chris. Chris, she's a very well seasoned um, uh, crafter. So she knits and crochets and she's very well seasoned. Um, she says uh, yes, although she knows how to do it. Uh, but she still loves watching videos because I always uh, learn something or get a refresher. So yeah, that's really good. Uh, Christy says, yeah, the burnout roving um, verges on a super bulky. It is on the verge of a super bulky and I don't have another roving in an actual super. Well, I do, but it's like really far away. I can't reach it. I'll spill my coffee. So yeah, um, but it's, I can see it from here and it's definitely bulkier than that one. So there's quite a range. If you've ever noticed in the number five and six category, there is quite a range as to what constitutes a five and six. And then a seven is pretty obvious it's a seven. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to craftyarncouncil.com and learn, uh, read up on all those things. Also, dryer balls, let's talk real quick. I'll get back to some of these comments. Okay, so last week we had Carol come on. We grabbed some people um, to jump in on the broadcast. It was really cool. And um, we have, um... ooh, I just noticed something. Okay, all right. Uh, we have, I can now invite you to broadcast, by the way. Yay! I don't have to be on my computer, by the way. Yay! Um, anyway, um, <laughs> uh, we were trying that last week, and we had some people on, and we did a little split, split screen, and Carol jumped on, and she told us about dryer balls. I'm trying to fix something. And um, I have some sort of virgin dryer balls here. Okay, here's one. This is in cotton. I got to fix this thing. Okay, anyway, this is cotton. So we didn't talk about this. Now here's wool. We did talk about this. Um, so Carol got on and she told us all the how to's and what's it about making a dryer ball in cotton. And then she, uh, I mean in wool, uh, but then she was looking it up and there are some people who are doing cotton. So I said, well, let me run a test. So last night I made like a half a dozen of these, well, a half a dozen uh, that I'm testing and then this extra one or these extra two. Okay, I made eight. <laughs> I'm tired. And then, um, and then I made three, uh, four of these, four of these, <laughs> these are wool. So I'm testing them and right now banging around in my dryer <laughs> are these balls and boy, were they a mess? Oh my goodness. They're you, what you do is you make the balls and then you trap them in pantyhose like knee highs and tie a knot and then put the next one in, tie a knot, put the next one in, tie a knot, throw it in your wash. And, um, and we'll talk about that on Monday. We'll go through the whole thing and I'll show you my results. Um, but boy, I had three of them in there and they all like twisted and tangled together. 
I want to say that I missed a step. I I think maybe I missed a step, and maybe Carol said put it in a in a um a maybe she said to put it in a um a, a pillowcase or something, and I missed that step. So, uh, you'll catch Carol on Monday. She will be on the show here, and we'll do a little split screen, and I'll be showing what I did when she gets to the step, and uh, she's going to talk about all the things. Uh, so you can save on energy, uh, cut down on your drying time, cut down on your energy bill, and um, make use of your stash. And I'm hoping that this cotton works really well because this would be a great use of some of the cones you may have received from someone or um, use the rest of that because wool may or may not be too expensive for you because um, it doesn't need to be a blend. It needs to be wool. And uh, anyway, so let's... Uh, Anyway, I hope you guys will join me. So Monday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern, and look up that time for you in your time zone. That's the Q&A Monday, and it'll just focus on Carol next week, and then we will call it a day for that, and then I'll see you that following um, uh, Monday for that. We also have, um, uh, I have one more thing to show you. Boop. Oh, don't go away. It has to do with the mason jar, so... <laughs> I'm going to show you that. We'll see how much time I have. Oh, I've got plenty of time. Okay, so um, that will happen. And also, by the way, I publish videos every Friday on my uh, Good Knit Kisses uh, YouTube channel on knitting, crochet, and loom knitting. I haven't had any crochet in a while, and I want to show you uh, the crochet mason or the mason jar cozies from yarnspirations.com. It is featuring uh, Lily Sugar and Cream. Okay. And um, you can make these um, with uh, a mason jar. The pattern um, makes a, it shows um, a small one with a wide mouth. It shows a um, medium, which is this one right here, which is just like a standard mason jar size. And then there's a large one, which is like the, I think it's one liter. Uh, this is five milliliters uh, is, is, I believe what they call, they said. And, um, but the one liter one is like a taller one with the standard uh, mason jar mouth, like this. So before Mother's Day, we talked about um, what a cool thing it would be on, uh, on one of our Q&A days. I talked about, I thought this would be a really cool encouragement jar or words of, what we call words of affirmation, um, just, um, just sweet little words and phrases uh, for your mom. And you can fill out little strips of paper and put in um, special sweet words or memories, a memory jar, and put in things that you'd like to say to your mom or a special loved one. Um, so you can make a um, crochet cozy. So what happens is we crochet this up, it'll cover the whole thing. Let's show you a little bit of what this will look like. This is me putting this on here. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So this just sits and then it'll it'll go all the way up here and cover it. Uh, this one, this is not your standard mason jar. We have this thing called Slim Chickens <laughs> and a dessert comes in here and I have a couple of these so I thought this would be fun to use. Um, <laughs> my husband wanted to keep them so I'm like, you know that you know the mason jars are cheaper than that. You don't have to get the ones from Slim Chickens. You can just buy them for 30 cents or something. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, so um I had decided my kids heard about this. They heard me talking about it. And um we're gonna make them as a family. So I'm gonna make one for each kiddo and my husband, and then uh well everybody in our family, and I'm gonna put our monogram on the top here and I may get a sticker or I may do some special paint or something and so we'll put our monogram or our name on the top I'll probably do monograms because I'm gonna show it to you guys and that way because I don't usually talk about that I don't usually say my kids names on the videos so I'll do that and then we'll have these jars around I'll probably make another jar that has all the slips of paper and uh, pens and stuff so people can write little words of encouragement so anyway um <laughs> Uh, let's see. <laughs> Let me scroll and read some of y'all's comments. Chrissy says, I find Snapchat ridiculous, but YouTube is pretty much life. Yeah, it really is. Wanda says, the first time I used DPNs, I used bamboo. They were less slippery than the metal needle ones. Seemed to hold the yarn better on the needles. I made a baby hat. Excellent. Yes. The um, bamboo is going to grip it, and if you're worried about them falling and sliding off, absolutely. Yes. The ones that I have here um, are... 
the I keep grabbing non DPNs. These right here are, um, let's see, how wood are these made? Is it saying what kind of wood they're made from? It's not saying what kind of wood. Whoops. Well, this is not birch. Uh, I mean, this is not um, bamboo. This is birch. So bamboo, or it should be birch. Anyway, um, if it's not, I'll have to find out. But birch is uh, less grippy than bamboo. So if you want a wood needle, you like the feel of a wood needle, but it's too grippy for you, like especially like in a roving yarn, then a, another kind of wood would be nice because it's smooth. But versus a, versus a metal needle, like like this is a oh that's not my metal needle. Where's my metal needle? Anyway, a metal needle. Um, the me <laughs> like I had it right here. Oh, this is my Knitter's Pride carbons, and so. I like these um, versus like all metal. So these carbons, they grip enough, but they're still slippy. And then the tips are metal. Um, and then they're like Addy, Click, and um, and other ones, um, other brands are, uh, you can get all metal. And um, and Knitter's Pride also has some all metal too. But anyway, um, so depending upon the texture, it'll be more or less slippy. Let's see. Um scrolling through let's see Carol um, oh and by the way this video for the polka dot hat that I'm talking about here this would be a great one for a beginner and if, if you're not sure about um, making all these pearl stitches on here and, and you're like, I don't want to do the polka dot. I just want to do the basic hat. If you like this hat and you don't want to do this part of it, um, don't make the pearls. So um, just knit the whole round and count how many rounds there are and just knit the entire thing. So you will have a stock and net main basic hat. So um, what this is, if you want to know what this is, the, when you see all these V stitches here, Okay, these stitches that are shaped like little V's, that's stockinette. So if the whole thing was made that way, it's stockinette. But this is a what was called a stockinette field. And then there's these dots here. And the dots are actually a seed stitch. Okay, so it's knit pearl, knit pearl, and then the opposite the row the next row shifts over opposite. And the seed stitch is what we're gonna be making um, this Friday on your inspirations on the seat cushion. So it's seed stitch. And I'm going to show you how to um, figure out your cast on. And I'm going to show you how to change color in two different ways. One is carrying the yarn up the side. And I'm going to show you how to do the mattress stitch from side to side seams and on end to end seams. So on the edge stitches, on the cast off side, on the bind off side, we're going to do mattress stitch from the end. And then weave in our tails into the seed stitch and weaving in tails into a garter stitch. And yeah, <laughs> so I cover the whole thing. It's like a 30 minute video and I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, let's see, any other questions? I wanna cover some of this. Um, oh, thank you for the link to the Craft Yarn Council, Joanne. Um, oh, I have one more, a couple more comments about the dryer balls. Chris says, if cotton felts with dryer balls, does that mean summer garments I'm making in cotton will felt or shrink? Now, I believe that this, the, um, someone may have answered your question, but I'm just gonna answer it anyway. These are not really supposed to felt, but I think they're supposed to kind of like, just really get stuck to each other. And um, the way I finished them off, and I'm gonna have to fix this one, <laughs> Um, but I, what I did is in the end, I wrapped it with another yarn and then I used a needle and then went through to really get that end in there. And so we'll see how it does. Like I said, I'm doing my test and then I will report back to you on it. Carol told me last night and she'll talk about it again on Monday, our little, little cat out of, the, out of the bag for exercise things. It probably will be like sports stuff. It probably will be better to use cotton um, so that it doesn't cause static. Now it doesn't cause static with wool on all her other things, but for some reason on her, um, uh, her family's clothes, it will, um, cause some static on the sports stuff. So we're thinking cotton will work better for that. Now, as far as felting goes, it's not supposed to felt like, so it's not, it probably won't shrink up as much, but the ball should remain intact and it should cut down cause it, it does absorb. So it should cut down on that drier time. 
Um, but no, you don't need to worry about your cotton items that you're making um, uh, shrinking a huge amount. There is going to be some shrinkage when you work with cotton. If you've ever made a cotton dishcloth, there is going to be some shrinkage involved. So um, you're going to need to run a test swatch. Um, I would make it in your main pattern, a stitch pattern, make it in a size, measure that size. You may even take a picture of it. And then when it comes out of the wash, um, I would wash it how you normally would. Don't just block it in a normal way, but just throw it in the wash with something else and throw it in the dryer and then see how much shrink it's, it's going to be. And then you may need to uh, add in a few extra stitches to uh, accommodate that. Uh, crystal, and, and it'll stretch back out a little bit, but not, not terribly much. Uh, it won't, but it's not going to felt like wool does. Oh, can I say... Can I say the loom book uh, name? Okay, the flower loom book so she can look it up. Uh, I got a flower loom and need help. Okay, if you go to goodknitkisses.com and click on my store, uh, you'll see down in the book area that you can get the book down there. But it's called, I'm sorry, this is backwards, but it's called Flower Loom Crochet. I just happen to have it right next to me. <laughs> flower Loom Crochet. And it's on the Annie site, or you can go on my website and click on that. There's an Amazon link, Amazon store part. Um, also, and actually, I think there's ads for it on my blog, so it should be anywhere on the blog. Just click on it. I'm trying to make it easy to find. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Carol says, um, <laughs> yeah, hers get twisted together, uh, but she's going to talk about it on Monday. Okay, the cozies. Y'all are ready for the cozies. Um, yeah, Christy wants to make a giant one for her half gallon half gallon jars gallon uh when she brings meals to people um i use half gallons for soup oh oh yeah okay so let me talk about that so the pattern the way that you would adapt the pattern is um i'll just tell you if you will um the instructions for that um let me flip over and let's just do a, t a quickie tutorial here i've got i've got about 15 minutes and then i'll i'll be headed out so let's just talk about the cozy now from here on out and let me flip the camera. All right, move this aside. Oh, let me get to turn on my iPad. Sorry, it's got my um, pattern on it. All right, so this is the pattern. This is what we're talking about here. And then I've already started my jar. Now I don't need the jar to make it. That's just, I just happen to have that. I've got my um, yarn. And then my hook, this this is a um, furls hook, and it is an F, okay? So this is the, the jars. I'm making this size here, this medium. So lily sugar and cream, and um, you need one ball for any one of them. Um, it tells you how many yards, actually, which is really helpful. Not all their patterns do they do that, but for the small, you need 25 yards. This one is 40 yards. This one's 72. So if you're doing the half gallon one, Christy, then you, I mean, one ball will still will still work for you. And it's a size F um, or 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter hook. And you do want to check that out because um, crochet hooks, um, the number may, the letter may change, but the millimeter is the part you need to pay attention to, especially on crochet hooks. So if it's a 3.75 hook, you should be good to go or um, size to obtain the gauge. Now, I happen to be a tight uh, I'm a tight hooker. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a tight crocheter. So I probably could jump up to a four millimeter. I could go up a little bit, uh, but this should be fine. Um, but it, I mean, it's, it's tighter on here and I've had to stretch this out a little bit. Ah, I'm getting a warning about my appointment. There we go. I have an eye, eye appointment. <laughs> so I gotta get my eyes examined. Uh, okay, so this is an easy pattern here, and like I said, we talked about the different sizes. We have a 250 milliliter, a 500 milliliter, and then a one liter uh, version, and um, all of them start with a base. And so what Christy's talking about is her jar is going to be a half a gallon, where this one's the 500 milliliter, and this part right here is what is critical to getting your size. So really... Um, you need to work these rounds, okay? Go over to see what the first, second, and third round, go all the way to the fifth round, and it says 30 stitches. Um, you're gonna need to continue increasing to get the size of your bottom, 
okay? So this matches, this matches this bottom pretty well, okay? And so that, that's the critical thing. I don't know about the numbers. You'll probably be able to figure that out because obviously I haven't tested it on a larger jar, so I couldn't tell you how many stitches to end with. This one says ending in 30 stitches. Um, I would say it needs to be an even number, um, but I couldn't tell you for sure. So um, this particular one, I've worked the, um, so the way the pattern kind of sets up, um, you, all, all versions, Come on, zoom in now. Uh, all versions, you make the base, and you come over here, and then um, you finish with the 30 stitches, and then, see how it says small version? If you're going to the medium or small, you need to skip over to find your version. There's the medium version. Okay, so that's what I started with, and now it's, it gives me the instructions, and then it says, work from asterisk to the double asterisk to double asterisk. Well, you gotta go so find the, the first double asterisk. Well, there's the last double asterisk, and then I got to go all the way over to this next page here, and it started here. So when you're reading patterns, you really got to read all of it first to kind of find what you need, and then it says, so read from here to here, uh, repeat from here to here as given for the small version, and then when you're done with that part, then you jump down to this next instruction, and then you're going to work the fifth to the eight rounds in that area again, um, and then you repeat first to fourth rounds of body once more. So it like it gives you all that. And then once you get past that, then you do this and then you fasten off. And so going back and forth, that's what happens. Now, hey, if I put a little tea light in here or maybe one of those ones that just it's not even like a flame and you just flip the switch and use that, you can put, you know, whatever in them. So, yeah, they're using them for lanterns, but um, I think it's pretty cool without Okay, so the part I wanted to show you is this thing here. So look at these instructions. Have you ever seen this before? Y-O-H. All that is is yarn over hook. It's just like, meh, you know, pulling, put the yarn over the hook. That's pretty simple. Um, but then on this one round, they, they want you to do a DCL. So you have to yarn over hook and draw up a loop, and then you yarn up a yarn over a hook, draw through two loops on a hook three times as indicated in the space, and then you do it again. There's four loops, and it's like reading that the first time can be overwhelming because you're like, oh my gosh, what is this? <laughs> so I'm going to show you. Uh, let me get to that part of the pattern here. If, you've, if you're familiar with V-stitches, uh, the round before created these um, these V-stitch areas here like this. I'm going to move this to the side so my lighting will fix itself. Um, let me get this. Uh, uh, let me get this a little closer. Hold on. I got a, I got some uh, tripod uh, things I need to mess with here. Hold on. Okay, let me see if I'm scrolling to see if anybody had questions, so hold on. Okay. All right, so this is my, um, this is my little cozy that I've got. I've got my hook, and all right, so this is where I finished last time, and the end of it is, um, is the mason jar thing just so people know what we're working on whoops i'm gonna yarn over here okay so my pattern is telling me uh to um <laughs> i gotta get back to where i was okay i'm repeating this thing called a dcl and then i chain one well the dcl is really involved so what it does is uh let me go back to that other page so uh, my DCL is, um, what am I making, Roxanne? Oh, she's just joining me. I'm making a mason jar cover here, and I'm just working through one of these stitches, this thing called a DCL. So I'm going to yarn over hook, and then I'm going to go all the way over to this um, V-stitch here, all the way over here. Okay, so I'm not chaining a bunch. I'm just going way over here, and then I pull through. It says draw up a loop. Okay, now I have three on the hook, and now I'm going to yarn over, hook, and pull through two loops, okay? Then I'm going to do it again, and so I do it um, three times. So yarn over, hook, draw through a loop, 
yarn over hook, pull through two, and I have three on my hook. Yarn over hook, go through, pull up one. Yarn over hook, pull through two. Whoops. Two, and now I have four on the hook. Now I'm done with that part, so I'm going to yarn over hook and pull through all four. Okay, now I repeat again. Okay, so this, and uh, but I my instructions are DCL, uh, chain one, okay, and that's in parentheses, and I need to do that three times. So not only did I do this part three times, but I have to chain after that and do it again two more sets. So it's going to look like that, okay? So here we go. Yarn over hook, pull through a loop, yarn over hook, pull through two, Yarn over hook, pull through a loop. Yarn over hook, pull through two. Yarn over hook, pull through. Yarn over hook, pull through two. One, two. Yarn over hook, and now I pull through all four. Chain one. Do that again. Yarn over hook, pull through. Yarn over hook, oop, and see how that's really loosey-goosey here. Did I chain one after that? Did I chain one? <gasps> Kristen, what are you doing? Okay, hang on. I couldn't tell. Okay, we'll pull through all these. Okay, now chain one. I did it, but being live, I got distracted. <laughs> yarn over hook. Okay, we're going to start this one again. DCL. Okay, pull through. Yarn over hook. Pull through two. Yarn over hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over hook, pull through two. One, come on. Two. I promise there's three there. Yarn over hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over hook, pull through two. And then yarn over hook, and then you have pull through the four. Okay? And then chain one. Boom. All right, and then you would go over to the next V-stitch all the way over here, this little part that does this. And so this is my last V-stitch, and so the notes are different for this one, but um, I do um, at least one, and then I'll have to go back and look at the directions. So yarn over hook, pull through a, a loop, pull through two, yarn over hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over hook, pull up a loop, yarn, uh, yarn over hook, pull through, and yarn over hook, pull through one, two, three. Cool, right? So that's how you that's how you make this, and then you um, go along and make your next round where you have to set up for the V stitches again, and then you make uh, make several of these. So this is what I'm doing um, for people who are joining me. We're working on these jar cozies, so you can see the um, you can see right here where I've got that uh, DCL. And it's going into a little V-stitch here. And then I have another set of round um, that I'll have to set up. It looks like this. So until before my next setup of V-stitches, it's going to look like this. And then I'll make another area where it has these little V-stitches, which looks like this before it has anything on it. And then we'll set it up with the DCL. And so it just kind of offsets here. Isn't that cool? So you would just continue that pattern. If you if you have the half gallon like Christy's talking about, then she would make as many of these as she needs to and keep repeating those rounds. So the rounds that have the first beginning part and then the offset part, and then she would just repeat that and that until she gets to the end and then she would finish it off. It looks like it's using this area here because I'm just starting this pattern. I mean, I'm just, I'm in the beginning of it. Okay. And then uh, you would just finish it off um, to um, get it right up to the edge of your jar. Whoops. Hitting the camera. So you get it right up to here. So this is this one right here. All right. Cool. Well, I hope that um, that was, that was interesting. <laughs> Did you guys like uh, looking at that today and seeing uh, seeing that stitch? I've never shown that stitch before. I had never done it before this one. Um, I'm still learning. I, I, I do. I still learn some uh, crochet stuff. I enjoy learning. Um, I can't always get to it, um, but whenever I whenever I have one that's interesting to me, I like to show you. And I'd like to make this on later in the summer. I'll probably make a video on it um, and. Uh, 
yeah, but right now, if you want to see a full working tutorial on it, you can go to the Yarnspirations, uh, their YouTube channel, and check it out and work with your Lily Sugar and Cream. Uh, honestly, I think that you could do something with this as a, just a separate thing all by itself. You can cover a water bottle. Um, you could really cover anything and then make a little strap. So you could do a lot with these little cozies. And there are other patterns out there. This is, happens to be the free one from Yarnspirations. So, yeah, isn't that cool? All right, let me get back on here and chat with you guys. And uh, hey, whoa, <laughs> whacked out on my camera here. <laughs> uh, let's see, I think there was a few questions. Hopefully I didn't miss it, but whoo. Um, yeah, the cluster stitch descriptions. Yeah, that's what that is. You've seen YOH a lot, but maybe the C, uh, DCL, maybe you haven't. Yeah. Oh man, Chris, Chris had somebody eating into her yarn money. She said she had to drop off her car for brake work. Y'all going to seriously cut into my yarn buying money. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know the feeling, man. We bought a house this year and then my car went kaput and we had to buy a car and I was happy that all my cars were paid off before that. So I say all my cars, my husband and I have each have a car. So, <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. All right. Well, cool. Well, um, you guys, um, I hope, um, oh, Chrissy says that I just, I just don't put cotton in a dryer. I let, I hang dry and then air fluff. Yeah. And you can do that, Christy, for sure. Um, if you've got good circulation and you can hang dry and that's good. Um, I can't really hang dry my house very well. It doesn't really do very much. It doesn't really do well. Um, but I could put it outside for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, I like to put, when I do cotton, a lot of times I'm using it for my pot holders and my dishcloths. And I actually do like them to shrink up because I like them to be kind of dense. And so I throw them in the dryer. Um, so I'm, I'm constantly doing that. So anyway, um, I'm glad you guys got to join me today and I'm going to head out of here. So glad. So glad you're here. Oh, Pearl says awesome. Yay. Oh, Robin likes the water bottle cozy idea with a loop or hang out of the bottle from your purse, bag, or stroller. Yeah. Yeah. So be good for the summer. All right. Well, hope you guys have a great day. We'll be uh, checking you later. And uh, yes, that dryer ball is a cotton. Monday, we will have a full on discussion of dryer balls. I will let you know the test, what worked better, um, if they both work really well. I'm gonna tell you the shrinkage. We're gonna compare a, a raw original ball with, with, a, with one. So this, this is a ball that has not been done. This is a ball that's not been done and we'll compare them with the ones that are gonna come out of the wash and dryer and I'll tell you how many cycles I had to do. So that's all coming up on Monday. On Friday, catch me on the Yarn Inspirations blog and I'll see you uh, I'll see you guys later. Have a great day and happy knitting and crochet. Bye everyone.